I'm Jason Harmon, and this is API Intersection, where you'll get insights from experienced API practitioners to learn best practices on things like API design, governance, identity, auth, versioning, and more. Welcome back to API Intersection. Uh, so I always start off saying a little bit of a different thing today, and that's part of what I love about doing this show is there's always something different. Um, so I think in this sense, not so much different look at API programs per se, but I think a, a bigger context within tech of, you know, how can we kind of be more inclusive in all the things that we do? And, uh, you know, I'll be honest, sometimes it's like, a lot of fluffy talk and like, you know, how do we actually get things done in this regard uh, is what I'm always seeking out. Uh, so I'm super excited today that we have Sinead Chapman, uh, who I think has a lot of interesting things to say in this regard and kind of some practical advice on how specifically developing, designing APIs, there's things that we can do in practical ways. Uh, so we're, you know, all about sharing that. So uh, Anna, my co-host, as usual, uh, thanks for joining. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me again, Jason. And uh, Sinead, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you so much for having me today. So I'm Sinead Chapman. I'm the founder of Nerdy Diva. So we are a small and mighty team that is focused on inclusive design and empowering uh, the next generation of designers and developers with knowledge and resources, and also working with community projects that are doing good uh, and using technology for uh, making a, a positive impact. So happy to be here and talk with you all today. And Shanae, you have like a, a different uh, day job in addition to that too, right? I do. Yeah, I am uh, definitely someone who likes to stay busy. And um, by day, I am a senior UX researcher at HashiCorp. So I work on cybersecurity products uh, and help understand our users and their pain points and challenges and provide recommendations on research best practices and also design recommendations on how can we make our products easier for people to use and, and also help them with uh, securing their environments and, and having that reassurance and confidence in the product. And uh, apparently there's a, another piece in here which you're not touching on, which is being a diva. And I just have to call <laughs> out that I am like feeling incredibly unstylish today. I've got Anna <laughs> with this amazing like yes, like yes. space galaxy, looks like a I Hubble image of color with matching glasses it. and Shanae with like beautiful purple hair yes, and this amazing yes. necklace. And I'm here with like a ball cap and a t-shirt on. You guys are making me look like bums oh, or making no. me look like a bum. Look, but, everyone uh, is good welcome. For you. And that's, that's kind of <laughs> part of why I created Nerdy Diva with the idea of like being a super like creative, artsy, you know, fashionista and definitely still a techie and a nerd and love all the complexity of how systems work and integrate. So like all are welcome. And, and that's really part of, of why I built Nerdy Diva as well. Totally allowed to be all those things. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, tell us a little bit more about this, this kind of Nerdy Diva thing and uh, what's that all about? I mean, I, I get the sense that, you know, you're kind of teaching and whatever, but like mm -hmm. where and when and how does this happen? Yeah. So um, we partner with organizations that are focused on uh, empowering our communities and sharing knowledge and resources. Uh, we've taught workshops at uh, the IXDA organization, so Interaction Design Association, uh, UXPA, uh, User Experience Professionals Association, uh, API Days uh, International as well, uh, and also Human Factors and Ergonomic Society, among uh, many other organizations that we partner with. So like, the idea of getting the information in the hands of people so that they can use it and leverage it and, and have that information for uh, impacting their businesses and their startups and um, the work that they're doing in the community is really what we, we focus on. Um, we also love to partner with uh, 
founders and startups that are building new products and giving them some expertise. Uh, so that knowledge I have from uh, my extensive career in tech, sharing that out, like giving some review on UX research and design best practices. We do audits and also look for how can we um, create products and services that are inclusive, that are meeting accessibility standards as well. So definitely the experts to come to if you want some of that and, and need some of that for protecting your business and your reputation and your community. What types of businesses are benefiting from APIs that you're experiencing? You know, uh, I am definitely uh, someone who believes like every business could use some APIs. It's just the, the idea that you can connect uh, different parts of systems and integrate them and create uh, essentially um, a way to have this uh, mashup of, of different tools and make it consolidated and easy to use for your users and readily available. So some of the, the APIs that I personally use for Nerdy Diva uh, are the MailChimp API, so connecting that with uh, our newsletter subscribers and making sure that they get information, uh, whether they are signing up from our website or if they're signing up from social media, that they're able to get information that they uh, find helpful. Uh, also, the, the Google Maps API, we use that a lot when we have events, just something simple as how do you find the event that you want to come to? And as we do more things in person again, which I'm very excited about being able to integrate like, APIs for like Eventbrite and other tools that we use so that we're able to connect with our community and we're able to automate. And so like the small, mighty team is able to run like a, a very uh, more mature uh large enterprise because we have tools in place to help us to streamline our processes. Yeah. Sometimes we get into these very big discussions with, you know, people like Microsoft and Pinterest mm -hmm. and we're like, Oh, they're using these giant uh, systems to expose their business value to other. It's sometimes as simple as are you using, you know, a, a maps system to show yeah. where you are, yeah. right? Like, that's it can be as simple as that. And mm -hmm. to do that education for, for very small businesses to leverage and capitalize on the value that APIs can bring to them is is so valuable. I think I think we often forget about that. Yeah. And it can definitely be a gateway where you start using something um, that you have as a consumer, you're like, hey, maybe I want to integrate Instagram so that I can have my store uh, items show up on Instagram, but also on my website. And it can grow and expand from that. Like, oh, what other tools can I integrate with? Maybe I can integrate with AWS. Maybe I can store some data there and, you know, keep track of um, my systems and, and update that performance so that we don't have delays when something runs out of stock. So being able to be more proactive and have some of that disaster recovery, I think also can be a really helpful benefit of having some strong APIs. Yeah, it's the... Uh I feel like that's over the years, one of those startup pieces of advice I've given a lot is like, focus on what you're good at or what you want to be good at, and then integrate everything else, right? It's like, like you said, you know, sending newsletters and coordinating events, and that's not what you're trying to be good at, right? So, well, I mean, there's you know. people who are already, they have staff of hundreds of people who build that, and that's what they focus on. And I salute that. And yes, take advantage of what already exists. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, um, everyone specializing on what, they, what they're good at is creating an entire ecosystem of incredible products mm -hmm. that, you know, produce these amazing end user experiences. So before we go too far down that rabbit hole of gushing about how much we like APIs on a geeky <laughs> API podcast, um, I, I was kind of, you know, uh, uh, again, when it comes to like some of these softer topics, I, I'm always like, you know, let, how does this have anything to do with APIs, guys? Yeah. Um, uh, but I, uh, kind of challenged Shanae, like, what does this have to do with APIs, uh, up front? And I, you have an amazing story on how kind of diversity inclusion related topics play a role in the API design process that I'd love to share with the, the listeners. Too. Yeah, definitely. So like my background is in, uh, tech as a UX researcher and designer and, uh, actually, um, UI testing as well. Um, so I have often been in the room where I'm the only woman on the team or the only black person on the team or the happy 
uh, conundrum of being both the only woman and only black person on the team. And having that lived experience and that perspective of um, hearing uh, terminology that is used just casually in conversation as we discuss uh, dependencies between systems and tools and Definitely um, knowing that my my white colleagues or non-black colleagues may not understand the context behind some of these terms and the harm that it can cause and, you know, creating a sense of um, inferiority and superiority when we are teams working together and how it can be a barrier from users adopting some of those tools and thinking that, oh, I'm not someone who should use this. Um, I'm not being considered. I'm not being welcomed into this community. Uh, so some of the terms that I include in the des designing anti-racism workshop are the terms blacklist, whitelist, master, slave. We see those terms all the time when we talk about dependencies between systems and, and essentially with APIs integrating different systems. And I encourage uh, people who come to the workshop to think of how those terms impact your teams and also your end users who see that in your documentation and in your style guides and in your code and what that says about your business and your values. And if your companies who say, hey, I value diversity and inclusion, I value equity and um, want everyone to use our APIs and our tools and, and feel supported, then it also has to come up with those actions of we're going to use terms that are uh, empowering instead of uh, terms that are harmful and pushing people away. Uh, so some of the terms I suggest instead are using terms like primary or secondary, access lists, deny lists. And actually those terms are also so helpful for people who maybe English is their second language as well. So it's just a clearer way to describe these relationships and these systems and these tools and these integrations as well. I love that. I also want to say like, but thank you for providing practical like examples. I, I was going to ask you, but I, you know, I was like, oh, maybe that's something she would want to hold for something else, you know, to, to showcase in, in a workshop. But I really appreciate you sharing that with our audience. I, I do want to say to Jason, uh, you used uninclusive language in your in your ask earlier. So you said, what does this softer topic have to do with APIs? And we often use we often use or hear soft skills as related mm -hmm. to what women do. Right. Those, that's like oh. communication or marketing yeah, or fair. and and so it and it's often used hard skills is coding and programming. And it, it's very exclusionary to women to use those kind that kind of language because we're often mm. pegged that way. And so I, you know, that's I just want to like say I'm not trying to call you out. It's it's more like if this is a conversation about that, I would I would encourage us to think about bringing these skills to APIs is not soft. It is it, necessary to, to yeah. make these conversations more valuable to people like you who think maybe they're not as valuable as they could be. So that's my two cents. Well, uh, and by the way, I think this is great, right? Like, uh, I, I think this is the thing I always encourage people is like, there's, uh, there, there's these unintentional biases and, and perceptions of different terms, right? That's what you're talking about, Shanae. So, Anna, I love you calling me out on this because it's things that one, I think, you know, you're saying people like you and the way that I think about it isn't necessarily true, but also that your perception is valid too, that soft has some other meaning that mm -hmm. I've been thinking about, right? For me, it's like more of the soft skills of managing uh, a company, right? Um, but yeah, that never really, I have to admit that never really occurred to me that soft somehow was associated with uh, sort of women in the workplace, right? Uh, so fair point. I'll learn from that. And I wanted to call out, Shanae, that if you weren't going to share terms, I was going to say, I remember a few years back seeing this notion of, uh, you know, master slave in, uh, in computer science that yeah. I went, oh, God, yeah, like that's the way it's taught, right? Like these are like conceptual things that you're taught coming up that you just don't even think about. Uh, so, yeah, totally appreciate the uh, I think this kind of broad effort to just shed light on the different perspectives. And we say it all the time on here, right? Words are super powerful yeah. and APIs are, are the most stripped down to just words thing you can do 
right? That's all they are in, in a sense as a collection of structured words. Um, you were also sharing with us before uh, some kind of automation approaches to how to do this and, and kind of make, uh, make some of these concepts scale better. Yeah, definitely. So after hosting a number of these designing anti-racism workshops, people would ask, okay, so how do I do this? What's next? And I've been thinking about it the past two years, and um, we have a manual spreadsheet that came out of the UXPA International workshop that was hosted where we have a list of harmful terms, and then we have alternative terms that can be used instead. And what my team is working on is this inclusive tech glossary. So taking those terms, adding it into GitHub and creating a word checker. So developers can use a script and they can run it and they can see where there may be harmful terms and get some feedback immediately on alternatives that they can use instead. So super excited and happy to partner with some of the developers and my network that I've, I've met throughout my career to partner together to bring this to life. Well, Shanae, I think uh, we're going to we're going to live workshop for a second here. And I'm just going to say, I think we need to introduce you to Spectral as a way to kind of lint oh, APIs. Yes, I think we could totally come up with a rule set uh, to define like here a set of terms and then suggested alternatives in the, the sort of error message. Love to see it. That'd be a yes. great collaboration. I would love to do Same. it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, maybe that's news here. So uh, let's see where it goes. All right. Another topic that you've kind of touched on throughout here is this uh, this idea of accessibility. Um, and uh, man, I, I, I think for me, every time I look at this question of accessibility, and I mean, even at Stoplight lately, we've been having more discussions about it. It's like, it's such a huge, expansive set of things, right? Mm -hmm. um, all the different ways in which, uh, you know, a variety of kind of minority cohorts have different issues with accessing technology. Um, you know, how do you think about, you know, the overwhelming nature of prioritizing what's really important and how to kind of go about, um, you know, uh, eating that elephant, so to speak, of uh, a lot of things potentially to do and trying to make the biggest impact? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not easy. I think first just acknowledging that this is hard. These are like multi-year efforts and um, figuring out how can we, um, one, take a look at what we currently have as an organization and understand um, where are we um, having uh, difficulty um, doing like a, a ADA compliance check on our websites and our systems and tools to just get that baseline of where do we stand and thinking about where could we have the highest impact? Where are some of those, those high traffic sites and tools? And can we loop in a roadmap, quarterly roadmap on ways to uh, bring impact to the, those high priority tools um, and just snowball that effort uh, each quarter? And I think it's um, definitely something where um, having the uh, marathon mindset versus the sprint mindset, that these are efforts that we are committed to and we're going to dedicate time to this every quarter um, versus, oh, we're just going to have a checklist and run through it quick, quick, quick. So I think that's that's shifting the culture and that's shifting the mindset. And it definitely, uh, there is some tension between um, taking the time to capture and identify where can we uh, improve accessibility standards uh, like in our documentation and style guides, for example, um, because that does require us to slow down and reflect. And it requires us to build in time uh, for implementation of updates that would be more accessible. So it really is a helping to understand, is this uh, something that we're committed to? And if so, then we have to build in that time. We have to build in that reflection. We have to make that a priority and be intentional. Where do you see that most people kind of get the ball rolling? I mean, I'll take like one example of, uh, uh, of like kind of visual impairments is, is one that most people think of with accessibility. And I think you know, it's one of many, many, many things to consider. But it's like on the hard end is, are you screen reader friendly? Like yeah. that's really tough to get to. 
And, but on the other end is like, you know, a huge proportion of the population has some kind of, uh, color perception impairment. Right. And it's like just having colors that are friendly sometimes a lot easier than like navigation that works on screen readers well. Um, but out, uh, outside of visual impairment, are there other areas or like, you know, the usual theme on our show here is kind of for listeners who aren't doing anything on this and are having the, Oh crap moment of, I should do something like, where do you see most people kind of get the ball rolling? Yeah, you brought up some good points. Um, definitely checking the color contrast is a, a good starting point. And there are online check- checkers uh, from WCAG. Um, so the, the World Consortium of Accessibility Guidelines has some free uh checkers also um and some of the designer tools so if you're using like figma or sketch there are some plugins that you can add um to have some accessibility checking of your texts and backgrounds and design systems which um hopefully you're also collaborating with your development team and you all are using those develop those design systems together and having the uh the hex codes and having the information available for the developers so that it's easy to access and implement. And um, it's even better if there's a way to automate those changes uh, so that this global changes can be automated and updated um, so that as you build out your components and your libraries, that you are moving forward in the the direction of having more accessibility. Um, I think it's tough when organizations try to borrow the ocean So I would say just start with um, the highest impact, high priority, high traffic um, systems and tools first, and then work your way down. So it just it it takes time and and being okay and having grace with yourself and and kindness with yourself and your teams that as long as you're making progress toward this goal, that uh, every every part matters and you are making a, a positive impact. Even if some days it seems like, oh, this has taken so long, but it's just as part of the process. Yeah, I mean, I, we, we hear that a lot on these kind of digital transformations, API platform transformations, right? These are big, huge things. And um, the idea that you can have a day where you suddenly decide you're going to do everything different, just there's no reality to it, right? I think it's the same with a topic as expansive ex- as accessibility. Mm-hmm. Um and I mean, to your point, too, on some of this, like getting language right, you know, uh, within API design. I mean, that's probably one of those things that you keep tripping across and keep learning things. Uh, just yeah. like, thank you, Anna, I got to do today. My pleasure. So, uh, Shani, any, uh, you know, usually it's like we're we're talking to folks building API programs and it's kind of, you know, where would you get started if you did it all again? But I think in terms of. You just touched on it for accessibility on kind of, you know, maybe where to get started thinking about things with increased contrast, whatever. Um, I think on some of these more kind of diversity and inclusion topics, where do you suggest folks, you know, we talked about a lot of great things you could do, but like, what's a good place to get the ball rolling? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would definitely suggest that people uh, follow experts in this field, like my team at Nerdy Diva, we have a newsletter, we drop resources and gems on a bi-weekly basis. And as we're building out the inclusive tech glossary, you'll get those updates as well. So we're very excited about that work that's happening. Um, I would also uh, suggest following um, some of the um, the leaders in this space um, who are doing anti-racism and diversity, equity, inclusion work uh, in technology on LinkedIn. So um, uh, Anna uh, St. Baptiste uh, is a diversity and inclusion uh, lead at Google, and she's doing some amazing work there as well. So um, just being in the the community of the folks who care about this work, just to get some of that information and that influence. And that can be a way to um, to keep the conversation going. And also from that that practical standpoint, get some resources as they are are being built and uh, staying uh, on top of uh, and being intentional about having uh, those access points and being able to share that with your teams and, and organizations. Yeah, that's uh, 
I suppose true across the board is start by learning and then be willing yeah. to invest at some point when you know enough, right? Yeah. Uh, I think that's that's great, uh, broad-reaching advice because uh, I feel like every place, every group of people, it's a slightly different context as to how you're going to see it. So very and cool. I do have to say that I am subscribed to Nerdy Diva. I love it. I would say uh, if you are at all interested in this topic, definitely subscribe because it's a fun read in your inbox every two weeks. And uh, another person I want to shout out a little bit is the blue unicorn, Madison Butler. Her yes, her LinkedIn yes. is just fantastic. So if you ever have a chance to follow her and, and see her on Twitter, definitely do so. Yes, yes. And I misspoke earlier. Um, actually, it's it Annie Jean Baptiste, who is the head of product inclusion and equity at Google. She's doing some great work there, too. Very cool. Lots of practical resources, y'all. Yeah. Well, uh, Shanae, any other sort of closing thoughts for us here? Yeah, I just uh, definitely am so happy to be here to share uh, this topic and the resources that are available and just would encourage everyone who is interested in creating more equitable and uh, welcoming communities with APIs and sharing that information out to underserved founders, like black founders, people of color, LGBT women, et cetera, you know, continue, even though it is, you know, sometimes definitely more of a marathon than a sprint. Your work matters. Your efforts matter. We appreciate you. We need more men who are sponsors and who are standing in and, and sharing what you know. So, so thank you for your time. And yeah, I want to keep the conversation going. Very cool. Thanks so much for joining us today, Shanae. Uh, educational for me. And Anna, thanks for calling me out. Keep doing it. You know, I will. Thank you, Shanae. Right. Okay. There you go. Thank you, guys. Thanks for listening. If you have a question you want to ask, look in the description of whichever platform you're viewing or listening on, and there should be a link there so you can go submit a question, and we'll do our best to find out the right answer for you.